Previously, we looked at a breaker component to work out exactly how it takes information from the one-line engine and turns that into an animation. Now, let's take that knowledge and put it to use. Let's say I was building out my one-line diagram and found that while I have a number of different breaker components, I don't have any switches. We'll pretend for now that the whole fuse and switches category doesn't exist. I need to contrive an example here. I'm going to start with a low voltage breaker because it's fairly close to my goal and duplicate it. Before I do that, I'm going to create a new category for my airport project. Aside from the default categories being locked, it's also useful to keep a single project's custom components in one place. Now I can safely duplicate the breaker component. I'll name it vertical switch and store it in the airport category. We already know how this breaker works, so let's start making changes. For my switch contact arm, I'll draw a vertical line between the two buses. I'll clean this up and increase its width to three, which is the one line standard. Now, how does a switch indicate open and closed? It rotates. So I'll add a rotate to my line. 30 degrees seems like a good angle to rotate. And the center of the rotation should be the middle of the x-axis and all the way down the y-axis. If you need more information on how rotates work, Please look in the system guide. There's a good diagram describing this feature. I'll name my rotation angle and my line contact. This will make them easier to reference in the script later. Finally, let me move my line into the center group for consistency. We now need to modify our script to reference this line rather than the arc. This begins with replacing connector arc with contact. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. We're no longer moving the center coordinates of the arc but rather changing the angle of a rotate object within a line. We'll have to get the child named angle within the contactor. Then we can set its angle property. I'll change the variables here as well. When the breaker is closed, the line is at its original position zero degrees. When open, it rotates 30 degrees. The colors do set the same attributes, but I warned you to think about the open condition. When a switch is closed, the contact itself is still connected to the bottom bus, so I'll want to set it to that instead of just black. At this point, I can delete the original arc, save the component, and close. 
we are almost there. All that's left is to test our new component. I'll drag out the component, connect it to my top bus, and set the bottom bus. For the sake of testing, I'll also set the conditions to static open values rather than testing it on a real breaker. While we're here, let me also point out that the component's ID starts with breaker. This is critical as it tells the connection debugger to look for the breaker objects within the component. Without this, the component will be ignored. Switching over to the web HMI, I see that the switch is open and the colors are following my expected scheme. I'll go back to the graphics editor and force the switch closed. The web HMI verifies that I can close correctly. Congratulations, you have now modified a one-line component. While there are many steps in this process, but that gives you flexibility to create whatever graphics are needed for your project. As you create more graphics, you'll build up your own library to reuse and modify further. With that, I think I'll end this long video sequence and wish you good luck and thank you.